Welcome to our video on the three financial paths and which one is the best for you. When it comes to financial success, there are really three paths that you can take. The first one is the sidewalk, the second one is the slow lane and the third one is the fast lane. The sidewalk is basically your average person living from paycheck to paycheck. No matter how much he earns, he'll match it with how much he spends. Sidewalkers can actually have a huge income. Let's say someone like a professional athlete. The problem with being a sidewalker however, is having no financial intelligence or responsibility whatsoever. So if something goes wrong, if you lose your job, if you aren't needed anymore, you're basically screwed. This is why you'll see even professional athletes who made millions at one point be completely broke now. Don't take the sidewalk. Then you have the slow lane. This is basically your standard, go to school, get a decent job, save 10%, Invest it in the stock market, hope it grows at 7% interest annually. And when you're 65, that is if you aren't dead and can still walk, you can be a millionaire. Yay! So why does the slow lane suck? Well, because I don't want to drive around in my favorite car when I'm 65, I want to do it while I'm still young. It's also like selling your soul for 40 years, so that when you're in a wheelchair, you can finally start having fun. Not that different from what people do on a weekly basis actually. Sell Monday through Friday, for two days at the end of the week, and do that over and over again. With that said, I actually think. That sadly, the slow lane is the best strategy for most people. Why? Because most people aren't capable of meeting the demands of the fast lane. And the slow lane is definitely better than the sidewalk. Now let's talk about the fast lane. The whole idea of the fast lane is this. The more value you give to the world, the richer you will become. And I absolutely hated hearing those kinds of quotes and things when I was young. It sounds so esoteric. How do I get rich if I give? It makes no sense. The reason it made no sense was because of how the principle was explained to me. I thought, okay, let's say I go outside right now and hand my money out, how will that make me rich? And it won't. I was right. But, had it been explained to me right, I wouldn't be so confused. So if you went outside right now with a $1,000 and gave 10 people a $100 each, that would actually be one of the lowest forms of giving possible. The person will take that $100, engage in mindless consumerism, and basically end up in exactly the same situation as when he started. What would be a higher form of giving? Well, if you went into your kitchen right now, and created a pill that could cure cancer, that would be one of the biggest things you could give to the world. That would be a higher form of giving. And yes, you would be absolutely rich, well. Assuming you weren't completely naive and knew how to protect your invention. The general rule is this. The more value you provide to more people, the better you will do. Sounds great right? So why do I say that the slow lane is actually a good strategy for most people? Well, because realistically speaking, most people have not developed themselves where they can give something of true value to the world. The biggest criticism this book gets is, well, but MJ, you're misleading people. Most people can't create a successful product. Most people can't create a successful business. 
And every time I read something like that I get nauseous. No. No. Like, and no. oh. Stop blaming MJ. Stop blaming the book. Stop blaming anyone else. If you aren't capable of giving tremendous value to other people, that is your fault. Take some goddamn responsibility. If you want to be in the fast lane, stop watching Netflix and go the library. Speaking of Netflix and the library, that was my life for four years in college. Classes would end and I would head to the library, pick up a book that I was going to read that night, come back to my room, and my roommate would watch Netflix for the next eight hours while I read. What did that do? Well, that put me in a position where I have given value to over 10,000 people in a few years. But what if you're not capable of creating a successful product or business? Well, that's where the slow lane comes in. The slow lane is a strategy where you work a regular job, save 10% of your income, invest it in the stock market, and hope it grows at 7% interest annually. This strategy can work, but it's not as fast as the fast lane and it takes a long time to see results. But, for most people, it's a better option than the sidewalk. So, which path is the best for you? It depends on your individual circumstances and goals. If you're willing to put in the work and have the capability to create something of value to the world, then the fast lane is the way to go. But if you're not capable of creating something of value, then the slow lane is a good option. And whatever you do, don't take the sidewalk. In conclusion, financial success is possible for anyone who is willing to put in the effort and make smart financial decisions. Whether you choose the fast lane, the slow lane, or something in between, remember to take responsibility for your own financial success and don't blame others for your failures. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more financial advice and tips.